Hi, this is Eileen Polis from Long Beach Public Library. I am glad to um, have this program today. This has been long awaiting. We did the canals last month. And so getting through Long Beach has been a very, very long history. We started out with Reynolds, the boardwalk. We did all of the Reynolds Channel, the dredging. We've done like every single thing on the bay side, on the, the beach side, and now we're going to the west end. So we went from the east end, now we're going west. And we have our guests today are David Lieberman from the Lieberman family, um, Dandy Bike Shop from the west end, and we have my brother Joseph Ponte, and we have Ann Evelyn, and she's on, right Ann Evelyn, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm on. The last name is Alterman. And Evelyn Alterman. And right. so, Kylie, thank you for coming today. And as I said before, I don't know if you heard me because I think Tom said I wasn't being heard. Um, the program today is about the West End. And what we're going to do as we go through our slides is that we're going to share information because, of course, in an hour, I can't cover the entire thing. And also, I don't remember everything down west. So whatever you have that you want to share with us, please kindly do so. Um, anything that you can remember, um, we only have an hour, but we will try to fit as much as we can in, in this hour. Of course, this first screen is a famous shot, um, probably early 1900s. And we're at New York Avenue and we could see California Street. And of course that building on the right is probably today's shines. So let's take the next slide. You know, Long Beach has a very interesting history. I was working with a young lady, her name is Christine Wright, and we got to chatting and I said, you know, it's funny because I know the Wright family many, many years, the around the corner was my neighbor, he was a Wright. And I said, were you related to Deb Wright? And she goes, yes, he's my great, great, great grandfather. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That is so cool because I knew about this map that you're looking at right now. Now, when Reynolds Channel was dredged back in 1908, most of the marshlands that were in Reynolds Channel were taken out because Reynolds used that dredging to build Long Beach. And what we see on the screen is East Rockaway Inlet, which back then in the 1870s was known as Deb's Inlet for Davenport Wright. Now, if you look at the Hog Island, you'll see D Wright on the map. This is map is dating back like to 1873. So da Davenport Wright has been in this area for many, many, many years. He was an oysterman and most of his family worked in the bays. All his children worked in the bays. So for multiple generations of Christine's family, the, the Wright family has been in Long Beach since the beginning when Long Beach didn't even exist. So we're looking at the East Rockaway Inlet, which is Deb's Inlet, and we're gonna go to the next slide. He is in the Brooklyn Eagle, and this is going back to 1896, that he was shown that he was the, the guardian of the bays. He basically guarded the oyster beds in what we now know as Reynolds Channel. So this is very, very cool. This person has been around before Long Beach even existed. Though in 1880, the hotel came and, you know, the Long Island Railroad came, but he has been in the bays guarding our channel for many, many years. So Miss Christine, whom I know from the library, who's now moved down south a bit, um, shared with me and her descendant, her grandfather, great grandfather is Deborah Floyd Wright and Valentine Wright is her grandfather. So this is the Wright family and they've been here since day one. This is the Wright family. They had a house in the West End. She thinks on Georgia Avenue, or it could be Florida. We're not <laughs> sure where the house is. Interesting. These early shots are of the West End when they were putting up the bungalows. As you could see, they're living on the sand. There's no roads, there's no streets, there's no sidewalks. But these people chose to move down in the West End and start a community. And these are great shots. That's very good shots. Yeah. These are from courtesy of the Long Beach, New York, Chuck Jacoby. Um, there's several people on that website that contributes, Dr. Taubman. Um, there's a Dr. Tidings. I mean, it go, the list goes on and on. Sam Schwartzman, um, Mr. Helmsley. There's a whole bunch of people who contribute photos. So these are from the Long Beach, New York site. 
So your creation of a bungalow community in the West End started out like this. Now you come to the building of the rows of houses the way we see them, where you have the double C streets and the single streets. And the gentleman who is the builder is from the city. And he came down here and he decided to put up these prefab houses and they all look the same. This is Delaware Avenue, probably coming from the church looking south. And you could see all the rooftops. So most of the houses are the same. One story. Yeah, one story, yeah. single love glows. Yes, Aunt Evelyn. No, I didn't say anything because some of them, some of them I remember as a little girl, some of those bungalows still existed. Yes. Not many, but some did exist. This is the builder who came from Brooklyn with his sons, Louis Bosseret. He was the producer and lover, lumber person who designed the prefab bungalows in the West End. And this is right from the Brooklyn Eagle. Um, this is his actually his obituary. He died at 65. He was a hotel owner. He built not only in Long Beach, but all the way through to New Jersey. Um, but you could see, it says that he built around 1,200 bungalows and Long Beach, of course, was one of his locations. Now you start seeing the tracks for the trolley. You still see that you have a starting of sidewalks and streets are not existing. This is like amazing. How could they build like this without any streets? Um, I right. do know that from stories that I have read that even well into the twenties and we became a city in 22, that they were telling the city, how come we still don't have paved streets? They were arguing that we're a community, why don't we have streets? So there was still into the twenties that they didn't have roads paved. So this is, uh, was an ongoing um, battle for the people in the West End as you can see, a long, long, long process. They have street light um, posts, but they have no, 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 right. no paved streets. Um, Chuck Jacoby put this actually together. This is two separate shots um, and he pieced them really, really good. I couldn't have done this better. This is in the early twenties. Very good pictures from Chuck. Oh, they're great. And they're, as I said, they're shared photos. So they're from many different mm -hmm. people. He has a treasure of Long Beach stuff, so. I went to the Brooklyn Eagle to see if I could find something about the West End bungalows. <laughs> Maybe I figured an article or a history, but what I found, which was even better, was there's an ad in here. It says Long Beach bungalow, two lots, $4,750 terms to rent. 450 in the West Helm area, Lindell and Park Street. If you keep looking down, they're for sale, but they're also willing to rent because if they're not selling the properties, they're willing to take some kind of money or income. But it's interesting, every single one of these, the bungalows back then, I thought I thought $3,000 for this time is a lot of money. It was? Yeah, so this yeah. is a lot of money. I mean, to us, $3,000, you can't even buy a car. But for them, this is their, you know, house. starting to get a house and doing a rental with maybe even like creating some kind of a system where they would put a down payment with cash as a rental and start paying the house off. This is Beach Street in Tennessee. And if everybody knows, it looks very familiar because this is the West End movie theater. Um, but in its pre-days, in very old, old days. The old West End movie theater was owned by my cousin, ah, Sydney Senator. Sydney mm. Senator, right? You told That's me that. First cousin. So and, they had uh, the best set. They had the best Saturday matinees. Best Saturday right. matinees. Right. right. I remember going as a kid. If the weather was bad, you went to the West End movie theater. Right. We used to get the coupons in those days. Yeah. Right. And I've also read that on the matinees, they used to send around a wagon and they used to pick up kids to take them to the theater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know where I read it, but I, I did hear that. that. Here's a great shot of it. And at this point, this um, ad here, it says the West End Theater. These were the films that were being shown at this time, which was Tarzan, The Magnificent, 
The Lost World, The Young Jesse James. Of course, it all came to an end in October of 1972. Um, they had a tragic fire and it took that whole thing down. And this, at this point, it was called the Nautilus, not the West End, but it was originally the West End Theater. The West End. Yeah. Here we still have our, now you can see our trolley tracks are in, now is being laid. Um, still we have sidewalks, no streets. So the initial tracks were just the metal. You didn't see anything else. This is uh, Vermont Street looking west. Um, signposts, United Cigars, and they're working on the streets it looks like. This is 1932. I don't think this is Shines because it doesn't look like Shines. It's someplace else. But interesting enough, the bootleg times in the West End or even throughout Long Beach are a little strange because it wasn't in a bar that was a bar that became bootlegging when Prohibition came in effect. It was everywhere. And you're going to see what I'm going to tell you in a sec. This is now, this is Shines. This is uh, Brooklyn Eagle, Monday, July 8th, 1929. Of course, they bust this uh, Shines. Uh, Captain mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he, uh, this is from the, this is from actually from the newspaper. So you're looking at it from the Brooklyn Eagle 29 in 1930, where they raid and they found liquor stash. $20,000 well, worth of liquor. That's, uh, that's, that's a lot. A lot. <laughs> that's a lot of liquor. It's a lot of liquor because things were like very hard to get. Right. So I'm sure they were inflating prices. <laughs> but what's interesting is when we go to the next slide, this is the actual photograph. This is a picture of 55 Cal California. Now Eugene Shine owned Shines from 1912 to 1946. Michael Delury's family owned it um, right. from 46. And then our current owner, his family is Brett Wilson. So um, Brett and his family owned this from 2005 yeah. to her. Across the street from the bike shop. Yes, this is the this is California, 55 mm -hmm. California Street. What's funny when I went to interview him because we were going to try to do a program on this, which we may still somewhere mm -hmm. down the road. He was fixing the bar. He found two things in the back room. He found this trap door where they would hide stash, mm -hmm. and he said he also found a pipe behind the bar where he thinks that they were pouring liquor in from outside in, which is very interesting. I mean, but he'll be able to tell the story better when he comes to do a program with me. I'm not going to take right. away all Shine's uh, starter. Right. Right? I'll, I'll interject. <laughs> I mean, Go ahead, dear. Um, Archibald Leach worked as a bar back there in the 20s. And if you don't know Archibald Leach, his name is Cary Grant. Oh, wow. And that's he was the bar back there. He had no money, and that's where he that's where he lived upstairs and worked for just for um for a room, just to let you know that was one of his first jobs as a bar back in Long Beach at Shines. Oh wow! <laughs> but as I was saying earlier, the bootlegging was just not in like Shines was a bar, and then when Prohibition came, of course, no liquor, but doing it undercover. If you read these ads in the Brooklyn Eagle, these are dated 1931. They're giving you many addresses, not California Street, 966 West Beach Street, seizure of a quart of gin, a quart of wine, a quart of whiskey. Then you go down and you'll see um, this big one, 22 Maryland Avenue, uh, one in five bottles of scotch, sherry wine, four pints of Guinness, I guess Guinness is stout, yeah. uh, Bacardi, I mean, they had stashes from like multiple addresses in these two ads are the bus that pe the police made. Right. And these are residences. These are not businesses. These are people's homes that they actually were casing people's houses to get their, their liquor and their whiskey and their beer and their stout. So if you could see each one of these is a different address. They're all in the West End. This is so cool. Let me interject my parents' house 623 West Chester Street, they had a fireplace with a hidden bar for prohibition. You lifted the top of the fireplace. Inside was hollow for liquor. No, that, see, that's these people weren't as smart. But yeah. this is very cool because you see, um, they they got a lot of whiskey and all kinds of things in 
person's house is. Well, and most of these addresses are down west. This photograph is courtesy. I think I found this also on the Shine. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I found it also on Chuck Jacoby's site. This is in the either maybe mid to late 40s. Um, and they actually have the names of the people. So I actually, uh, I borrowed that and I give credit to Long Beach, New York from Chuck. Um, Daniel Moriarty, Batani, Jimmy May. Actually, Jimmy May passed away not long ago. He was still um, at the bar a lot. He was there up until very, until, until he passed away. He still was a customer. Um, he was actually Golden Club's champion in his day, Bobby Leake and Tommy Sullivan. So this is a great, great shot. I think I knew them. Jimmy May. Yeah, he was a longtime customer of Shines. Him. I like this. This is an uh, an aerial of Beach Street in the West End. This is a postcard. Now we're looking at Alabama Street Firehouse. Um, this is circa 1924. This is another shot. Here's a great shot looking down Beach Street. I have this um, separated down a little bit. You'll see Coney Island day trips. This is um, West Beach Street. Here's a picture of the firehouse. This is Indiana. Indiana. This is the Indiana. This is 1928. This is the Indiana. This is a 1922 model 75 pumper, engine number two. So this progresses from this nice little firehouse here, becomes a business that we know it today. They remove the, um, the tower which Lester Capel told me, and I didn't know this, and City Hall has a tower as well in the old tower in the old City Hall. They used to have cloth hoses and they used to take them up and they used to string them up and they used to dry them in these towers. That's what they're for. I didn't know that. So he taught me something about history that I had no clue. Yeah. And then of course you see um, much later and now more current, the new firehouse. The firehouse in the West End has been built and rebuilt a few times. This shot is looking west, and this is on the beach in west. You could see the wooden jetties, and you could see the houses looking west. Looks like it's a hard thing. Yeah, it looks really battered. We have this one. This is these are great. This is 1927. Now we're getting somewhere. We have pavement. Oh, oh my goodness. This is 1925. This is, I think this is, looks like, this is rooms for rent. So people are renting rooms and there's a sign right on the, the house. Bungalows for sale or for rent. Cool. This is People's Church in the West End. Yeah. That's where I think they took the photo of the other one, that aerial, yes. I think is from this, from this location because you get the whole West End from that high point. So this is a really cool shot. And there it is, founded in 1921. Now I know the yeah, that's the one on, on Park, Park, Park yeah. Avenue. On Park. Yeah, it's on Park, well, it was Park Street, now it's Park Avenue. Yeah. This is St. Ignatius. My other bike shop was across the street. We're going to get there. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this is St. Ignatius, but we're looking towards the west, and you'll see the houses that are built here. I don't think these houses are here anymore. They look different now, or at least um, from my memory. I like postcards because you could see... Um, this is looking east, of course, from the West End. You see the jetties and you see all the houses. So this is very cool. Postcards are a treasure because yeah. they give you history that you don't have a picture of. The postcards actually, you know, does it. This is, these are beautiful. These are all colorized postcards. This is beautiful. Look at this. Very good research. Thank you. This is a this is supposed to be a beach club and bathing, golfing and bathing. Isn't that cool? Now, Finnins, of course, um, is before my time. Mine too. This is before my time. No, that, I, I remember I went to school with Gregory. 
Oh, you did. So the Finnage was there first. And then, of course, it becomes Papa Aldo's. I do remember Papa Aldo's because I'm old enough to remember that. And this, of course, didn't have a fire back then. So this is a great, this is an article. This is out of the newspaper. Um, this is the Independent. Um, Finnings in Long Beach for food and music. So they had dining yeah. and right on the bay. Yeah. This is the Arizona, the American house. This is the Virginian. This is a great shot. Um, this actually is a matchbook. This is from Chuck Jacoby's uh, collection. He's got a, an amazing collection. So I always pull all these things in because then it gives you more depth information where the location was. So where's the Virginian? Who remembers? I'm not that old. So, but look on mm -hmm. this, it's 912 West Beach Street. So the matchbook is a great piece of that's, research. That's very close. And who's this guy? Mr. Lee, who are you? Mr. Tell, tell us. Dandy himself, that's my father. That's one of the bike shops. That's at West Beach Street in Long Beach. Yes, and I remember that very well. Yeah, I remember very well too. <laughs> I remember your father's accent also. He spoke with a I think an Israeli accent, I think it was. Hungarian. He said Hungarian. The father of the Hungarian. Oh, Hungarian, really? Oh, how about that? Yeah. Yeah. That's my, that's my daughter, little uh, kissy grandpa. Uh, Couldn't wait for him to put his bicycle to put the tire uh, down. She was so anxious to kiss her grandpa. Uh, that's my sister, Olene. Hi, everybody. So Hello. Uh, have, that's why I put down on the program that it's going to be the Lieberman family, because David's here with me. And of course, I think he said his sister's on, right? My sister Arlene, yes. Hi, Arlene. And who else and is on? Susan, my Susan. other sister's daughter, is on. Okay. Susan and Sarber's she, on. Oh so my God. This, is, this is the Dandy family, since he was, he was called Mr. Dandy. Uh, was and I was called Dandy's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the Dandy bike shop, the only one I remember, of course, is the one on Beach Street in New York Avenue. I used to go there. <laughs> Talking myself from all the way up here in the canals to the West End to get my tire fixed huh. uh, because I didn't want to go to Kreitzman's because they were expensive. <laughs> I was watching my pennies back then. What I remember is Florence. I went to school with a Florence Lieberman. Florence is my yes. sister. Yes, Florence. my older sister. Yeah, I, that's, I went right. to school all through elementary school. She was in my elementary school. I remember her from at West School. West School, yeah. West How was the name Dandy chosen if... Uh... How is that? I guess that's an, uh, a pseudonym. How was that name chosen? Yeah, Dandy was, in, was on the building. Yeah, when the my father bought the building, it was Dandy. Uh, he bought it from oh, Dandy. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. became Dandy. Right. I see. That's Everybody fantastic. thought his name was Dandy, yeah. but it was, on, it was yeah. on the building when he bought it. Oh, that's so but cool. I, I remember Florence used to, they used to live there in back of the, the back, yeah, back yeah. Of the house. Yeah, because yeah, I can remember. Yes, she was but, friends with them. Yeah, it's back in the bike shop and Luxnet was a house. Uh -huh. Yeah, because that, yeah, that's where Florence lived. That's right. Yeah. Florence's daughter is on. Susan Gerber is on, our daughter. Hi. Wow. There she is. That's Susan. I went to school. So I went to school with, with Florence in elementary school. Oh, my school. God. Ah. That's so funny. Wow. Yeah, I think I went to school with David. Well, David's here. David's on. Yeah, I know, I know. I went to West School with David. I'm sharing. I was Sharon Deutsch. Oh. <laughs> so before I got married, wow. And my brother Irwin is here too. I, you, Irwin, I think went to school with Ar Arlene. Uh huh. Jacob. So this particular site is the one previous to the Beach Street, right? Yeah. Baby women. I hope you related to him. The first one. The first one. New York Avenue. Right, New York right. Avenue in the New York Avenue, yeah. Ah, how about that? Wow. And if we're going to find out a little bit more, because Dandy was just not on New York Avenue and on Beach, we got more stuff. Hold on. Wow. This one, this one says the 769 West Beach Street, compliments of Dandy Bicycle. And then, of course, by Central School, they had another location at 225 West Park. Right. Yes. So there is another one. And David shared with me that in Island Park by the railroad, they had another bike shop. That's correct. Oh. And of course, Mr. Dandy himself built this bicycle built for two and ah. still has it. So I got a shot of it. Thank you, David. 
Wow. <laughs> you take my, you steer it from the back. That's so cool. Very I can't cool. Like that. Not many people have that. Well, he made that. Yep. Yeah. So, so thank you. That is so cool. It is. Thank you, all. Lieberman family. Thank you for coming today. Yes, indeed. So cool. That is wonderful. <laughs> okay, now we're taking a trip down memory lane. This is from the NASA Star, nineteen seventy four. Oh, this is. Uh -oh. Oh, everyone went to school with um with with the twins. Oh my god. Wow. And of course, the other the photograph is much older than the seventies, but you could see um like eggs are thirty nine cents. Mm -hmm. Cucumbers are a nickel. We pay what three bucks for wow. a cucumber now. <laughs> this is crazy. You buy a melon for ninety nine cents. You can't buy a melon mm -hmm. for ninety nine cents anymore. Not even on sale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we have old rocks. Um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of sad because yeah. um, you know Frank O'Rourke just passed away not long ago. And oh. I was in that shop. Well, that, 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 that junior. See, I remember his yes. parents. Oh, his, yeah, but that's before my time. But I knew Frank Jr. And I know his son, of course. And um, it's just so sad to have a history of being in business with your family. And then now he, he passed away. So I was very sad to hear that he died. Uh, I have a paint stick. You see at the bottom? That's from O'Rourke's. My father used to, we used to buy a lot of paints and things from them. So I was in going through the closet. And what did you think I found? I found paint sticks. Wow. From the shop. Oh, that was a great place. Yeah, I liked him very mm -hmm. much. I, mean, I, I used to buy everything from them. He needed a part. Yeah. We had, had an east location too, right by, right. By, right by Associated. Right by house. Yeah. Now, this is going to be a display of multiple places. Oh. And of course, yeah, I don't have everything, but we're going to take a trip through um, what I could find. Hey. So, Patty's. On 1054 West Beach. That I remember yeah, well. We have Monero oh, Steakhouse. Monero wow. was very new, was new. That's that, that that's not even old. The last I remember when I remember when they had that fire. Oh yeah. Yeah, there was too. a lot of those going on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Terrace, the lounge, and the, West, the West End Bakery had the best crumb buns. Oh, what? there is the West End Bakery at 896 West Beach right. Street. Jack they had the best crumb buns in town. Best. Uh, I thought Nattel's made good stuff too, sure. though, but we're well, in the West End today. We're in the West End today. West End Bakery. Yeah. Best yeah. crumb buns. We mm -hmm. should do a Lenny show on bakeries. And I went to school with Lenny Beck. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. wow. Now that, I have to check your yearbook. That, that was his, that, his father opened the steakhouse. But uh, yeah. his son, I went to school with. Uh -huh. We were all, all together in West School. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. so Be clear. There were 20 of us in the West School. Wow. Yeah. That is so cool. So this is also multiple businesses that were down West. Um, mm -hmm. Star Garage, Lee's Pharmacy. Ann Evelyn, what was the name of your grandmother's drugstore? Matlin's. It was Matt on the corner, Matt. Matlins. It was on the corner of uh, Florida and uh, Beach and Beach Street in the oh, Wild uh -huh. in the Wilder Building. That's barber shop. That was across the street from my father's other bike shop. Oh, and uh -huh. another uh -huh. one. My parents owned uh, the Capri Building. Oh, right. And, and they had a bike shop there too. Oh, they didn't know that. Oh, so then when you have. Irving... Go ahead. When did Irving Irwin pass away? May I ask? Uh, 1992. 92? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so I bet he lived to a ripe old age. Yep. 89. 89. Nice. Wow. Nice to know. Oh, boy. That's really cool. Yes. Thanks. And we have, we have, um, actually, Petrie's office is still down there at the same address. Petrie opened up in, in my grandmother's drugstore. In my grandmother's oh. drugstore was. On the oh, corner okay. of Florida and Beach Street. Right. See that? that was, you know, and, and that was that my, and my grandma was the only drugstore. My parents used a peach tree to buy the building uh, on New York Avenue on Beach Street. Wow. Wow. The Wilder Building. Right. The Wilder Building. We're going to talk about that soon. So uh, these are other places. We have Larry's Corner for school supplies, top hat, uh, 
Uh, wine and liquor. And of course, please, if you remember definitely. other places, please interject because this is not everything. This is just a little bit of everything. Yep. Michael Parati and Parati, uh, my brother Earl went to school with Jimmy Parati. Uh huh. And, uh, you know, it's, wow. <laughs> Larry Shanzer on Larry's Corner. Esposito's, Esposito for the butcher. Mm -hmm. So here's Capri. Mm -hmm. And I always remember this. You ring, we bring. That, that used to be like 10 cents for a piece of piece of pizza. One time. Uh -huh. yeah. Unfortunately, I don't remember that. The earliest I could get was a buck 75 for a pie. Yeah. Wednesday and Thursday only. My parents at bike shop was next door. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I just want to say that Dan Evers, I mean, I'm not too oh, old. Never, but yeah. I remember Dan Evers because he fixed the screen for my, my, right here in my front porch. He actually yeah. did my screen. He yeah. was very old. Oh my God. Yeah. And like, he was so cool. You'd walk into his shop with the old screen door and he, you know, with the wood. And yeah. he was, he was like still around like forever, forever and ever. And most That's people why his name is things. Evers. Oh, yep. Dan Evers. He was such a nice man. And then, of course, his some wife was a teacher. <laughs> Lujo was good friends with him. School. Yeah. His wife was a teacher at West School. He, um, I went to school with his, sister, with his daughter, Ruth. Uh huh. Then we have Weinstein's Beachwear, which is in like oh, every, yeah, yeah, every, yeah. every newspaper they had an ad. Every week they had an ad. Oh, so yeah. they really were into business. Wow, my sisters both worked there on the in the summer. I don't know how they did it, but they worked. It was crazy. It was all these old, you know. Now I'm an older lady, but all these older ladies trying to buy bathing suits. It was very funny. That's pretty funny. And then, of course, the West End Bowling Center. Um, yeah. That on, was on, it was on on Merrill and Danny's bowling alley. Right, right. And then, of course, that went in smoke. Um, that Oh, yeah. then, nice, David, 19, David said that Lee Joe's bike shop was good friends with his dad as well. Wow. Oh my and God. Buddies. What happened with Buddy was a TV repair person and he came to my father to learn the business. Then he opened wow. up. Also, Christman in the East End uh, came to my father. In the 50s, everyone knows, he was uh, stationary and toys. Right, up he, here in the East End. The East yeah. End. He came to my father, teach him the business, and he opened up the bike shop in the East End. And that's where I got my first bike from Crisis. Um, West Home Garage. And I have to say that I put this on here because I have a very dear place in my heart for Dorothy Finn. Dorothy Finn taught dance right on Grand Avenue, Grand Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Crossing the church, I'd leave school um, on the afternoon after school, and I would walk over to her house, and I would take dance lessons for a dollar fifty a week. Wow! Ah! Uh, oh my God! And uh, she she lived a very long and wonderful life. Her her brother was a an actor. Um, she was in show business all her life, and let me tell you, till the day she died, she danced. So it was very cool. She came into the library. She said, you know, I'm teaching at the, um, the senior center. I'm teaching tap. I mean, you should come and talk and dance with us. I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> she was in better shape than me. Yeah. She was a, she was a treasure and I, I do truly miss her. Mm -hmm. so the other, um, San Remo, which is a little bit later. This is probably in the 80s. Yeah, no. so I function at that was, that was next to the bike shop. We have um, furniture, Vito's, of course, is much later, and um, La Magna paper hanging. That, on that was that was one of my brother's best friends. Oh yeah. Well, yeah and and Joe, 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 Joey, Joey, yeah. Joe, Joey was the brother. His brother. Uh huh. So then we have the inn, which is now in current state. This is the way it looks now. I don't think it always looked like that. No. <laughs> this no. is the, this is the jazzed up version of it. But the inn's been there for quite a long time. And of course, how could you forget Chauncey's? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> it took Long Beach a long time to get them out. Oh, they, uh, they did. They, they're, they're, they're history, but they're a lot of people, they have their own Facebook, and you could read stories on there that'll make you laugh. Um, I won't go into details. You have to go to Facebook and do it yourself. Um, but they've had, um, you know, they have a long legacy of, of um, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> My psychology is going there. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. All I can tell you is people always talk about your feet sticking to the floor. I've heard a lot of stories about Chauncey's. Yes, mm -hmm. right. And the saloon, which is now, this is beautiful. Um, of course, this is a, a, a new font. Mm -hmm. Now we're just, here's, I like this shot. I had to clip it out because yep. this is like day trips to Coney Island. Why do you want to go to Coney Island? Oh, to go to the, you know, to Playland. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is a whale beach. I think this is 72 and this is on the West End Beach. Wow. So that was a great shot. I had to steal that. Mm -hmm. This is the West End Pier on Arizona Avenue. And the reason oh. I've come by this is because this was an email question I got from a patron and they wanted to know if we had a picture of the West End Pier. And I was like, by golly, no, we don't. But here goes. Let's talk to Chuck oh. Jacoby. And Chuck Jacoby has everything. Not only did he give me a, a, a long range picture yeah. and points out the West End Pier, but this map shows the West End Pier right here on Reynolds Channel. Wow. This is really cool stuff. And it shows you it's on Arizona. Yeah. See, I, I remember Ingle Pier. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, New York. New York, York, York. We, that we used to keep our boats. Yep. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Now you have Papa Altos on there too. Mm-hmm. Let me interject. So, does anyone remember on uh, New York Avenue under the boardwalk? It was a restaurant. Yeah. That was my yeah. mother. After they closed New York Avenue, they opened up another restaurant under the boardwalk. Under the boardwalk. Under the boardwalk. Under the boardwalk. Yes. Under there, was the boardwalk. A very, there was a very popular bar on Arizona called Arizona for many years. That's right. Yeah. Across the street from the bike shop. Ah, how about that? Yeah. So here are some former businesses that are no longer around. Um, I had um, on my Long Beach Facebook, I didn't know where these things were, so I put it out there, and boom, 10 seconds later, they go, oh, that was on, on yeah. Adam, this street and this street, and they're like, uh, and guess what? Yeah. I got all the dates and the, and the addresses from all my, my Florida, Facebook Florida friends. Street. Nah. They, they said Nebraska. Nebraska. They said Nebraska. I could be wrong, yeah. but somebody said Nebraska. I remember. And this, of course, is on part of the theater that burned down, the photographers yeah. and the gaslight. Mm -hmm. And many people remember Betty's card shop. Yeah. Now talking about West School. Um, uh -oh. It is the best. It's fascinating because I always remember that. East is great, but West is the best. Um, right. the, first, the property was purchased uh -huh. by Long Beach East, School East, District in 1925. Say, he used to say East is beast. Oh, yes. East? Oh, excuse East, me. East is beast and West, 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 West is best. Is best. <laughs> well, she went to school in West. <laughs> so in 1925, the school district um, acquired the property on Maryland and it was purchased and they built the school. But in 68, they upgraded it to the current building where you see it now. And this is actually in the, the independent May 30th, 1968. Right. Wow. So that's telling you about the construction rehabilitation of the 1925 school. Yeah. I remember the old West school. Yeah. Yes. Old West. <laughs> Old West School when they did the construction. Do you remember, do you remember Miss, Mrs. Savani? If you went to West School, with a big second, great, 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 grand, grand piano in the auditorium. Wow. Hmm. And we used to have school plays. I remember that. I remember that. And because I went all through school in West School. Wow. I was there in West School. And, yeah. And it was like going to a private school. There were only 20 of us in the class. Yeah, yeah you're what? talking about a long time ago. <laughs> and <it> was, <laughs> and I, we wow. were close with all the teachers. And, there, and I can remember in the sixth grade, we had to make sock dolls. But at the same time, <laughs> and even the boys had to learn how to sew. But we also had, had a wood shop and we had to make lamps. Oh, I remember yeah, that. It, it, was like go, it was like going to a, to a private school. Right. Um, Joseph, I'm sorry, what were you saying, Joe? You know, I, I'm using the word alleged. When they were doing the construction in the 60s or 70s in mm -hmm. the West End School, when they were extending it, they found there was a room that no one knew with a cement wall. When they tore the wall down, we found an old Model T car filled with documents and history of Long Beach. Oh, my God. That no one knows about. And well, that must have been in that renovation that we it just It was saw. in the renovation, and it was a cement wall, which they built. And uh, they, the car disappeared, and all the, and all the information. We don't know who got the car. 
but that was disappeared history in the oh, late 60s. No. Car and all. Very cool. Oh no. And of course, this is the old um, annex of the Long Beach Public Library. Right. They opened in the West End in 1968 because yeah. people said, you know, we we're down here in this community. We want our own branch of a library because right. it's a little bit far to go to the middle of town, which mm -hmm. the 56 library opened where we are now, which is 111 West Park. Um, uh -huh. So this is the library um, announcement to please join us for our grand opening. This is oh. in the independent 1968. Wow. And then we had, a re, re, we had actually three locations because when Sandy hit, we just mm -hmm. got a new library down west and then Sandy hit and we had to get a third one. So this is the th there's three, there's three, there was three times that the West End was rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Oh, and how long did this library last? 68 to what? Until now, it's still there. Oh. Oh, it's still there. Oh, it's boy. Still there. Oh, God. Okay. And Evelyn. Yes. Who's this, handsome, who's this handsome guy on the left? That's my dad. That's my father, daddy. Oh, my he was the best my... jobs in the world. He was the best. Uh, thank <laughs> you. Thank you. And, and my brother. Evelyn, your brother and yourself, of course. And myself. And my six, Long Beach High School. With our sister. Right. And you went to school with David's sister, Florence, right? right. Right. And your brother, I think, wasn't he a physician too? Was he a doctor? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He, and he, he, paid, he paid us for a year and a half ago. Yeah, oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, but, he was my doctor after your father was my doctor. So and yeah. actually, if you read if you read his um under his his little blurb under his yearbook, it said the next school physician without a doubt. So uh -huh. he really fulfilled that. He became a doctor like your father. Oh uh -huh. yeah. And I like this. This is his registration card for the service. It tells you exactly where he lived, 86 Georgia. Um, and you know, people don't realize the wealth of information that certain documents can give you. Like most of the ads you saw, there's no existing photographs, but the yearbooks are my go-to. When I'm trying to find something, I go to a yearbook from year to year and I look at all the ads. And of course, I couldn't find anything because the right. earlier books, the 30s and 40s, had hardly anything. Um, but the um, but the ones, the later ones in the 50s and in the 60s, even now through all to the 80s and 90s, there's a lot of ads because those ads offset costs for yearbooks, especially now everything mm -hmm. is in color. And everything that's color published is very expensive. So a yearbook now is about $135, $140. Wow. So to offset people's costs for graduation, they um, buy ads and they sell them. So a lot of those ads that you saw are from yearbooks from Long Beach High School. So Anne Evelyn, you are very, yeah. very nice looking girl there. You're all in style, man. Yes. Well, we, we were required to dress, we were told, dress a certain way. I remember it was for picture day. Right. So dress code, yeah, really. Yeah. Not like today. Where you get, to, they pay a lot of money for holes in their jeans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you always had, in junior high, you had Genevieve Kelly that, that would be on your back and be the dress right. Oh, wow. Is that Genevieve Kelly? Genevieve yeah. Kelly was the principal of West principal. School. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, of uh, 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 junior high. Junior <laughs> high. Yeah. yeah. High. Machine gun. Machine Gun Kelly, they Machine called Kelly. her. Oh, she was a oh, witch. Gun Kelly. <laughs> she was that a is witch. funny. Yeah, that's what they did. So I actually put a post out of, you know, when I knew I was going to be doing this program. And okay. I said, if anybody wants to contribute photographs, could you kindly just contact me? Out of all the Facebook people that I deal with on Long Beach History, yeah. this one family sent me, you're going to see this page and the next page. They sent me a, a wealth of um, pictures of their family because they grew up and lived in the West End. This photograph is on the Bay on Wisconsin and the little girl in the picture is three years old is Geraldine McCarthy. This oh. is the Billy and that's, my, and that's my mother, Dennis Carey. That's my mom. Oh, and beautiful. Uncle thank you. And a couple of cousins at the foot oh, of Wisconsin. Nice. This is so, I mean, thank you so much. You're the only person that reached out to me to give, and David, of course, sent me a picture of his dad and the bikes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I do a lot of research, but I was kind of disappointed that people just didn't like want to contribute because this is a maintenance of your history. It's a history of where we live. And 
when I do these programs from week to week, I have people saying, oh, I can't come. Are you recording it so I could watch it? I had a gentleman call me the other day from a different school district. He's doing a program with his kids on elephants. And he goes, did the elephants really build the boardwalk? And I'm like, no. But mm -hmm. I said, I have, I have a PowerPoint. You can go on our website and you can look it up. Uh -huh. and go, I can't believe the information. He says, I can't thank you enough. So preservation of history, family, businesses, this is the way we preserve our history. Is by well, I, I, I gave about 50 pictures to the Historical Society. Um, <laughs> yeah, I unfortunately, I don't have access to that. But let me go to the next slide, and you're going to see these great photos. This is beautiful. This is the family. Uh, um, and thank you so much for contributing. This is great. Um, I mean, this is, like, so cool. You have um, your dad on the, is on the, on the jetties. I mean, this is like a fishing photo, which is so super cool. I mean, this is just great. I mean, you can't replace this. These memories yeah. are very important. And of course, that's me on the far left bottom sitting there. Oh, uh, that's like the bungalow? Uh, on. Do you know which, do you, which house, is, where is that one? Is that the Wisconsin house? It's 103 Wisconsin. It's 103 Wisconsin. Thank you so you look much. look at the picture of my parents, um, yes. The, the cars are on the um, wrong side of the road at that time on Wisconsin, the narrow Wisconsin street. Because right, I right. guess for a period of time, they parked on the west side instead of the east side. Oh, well, that's interesting. See, and I wouldn't see, I wouldn't know right. that. How do you like that? That is very cool. Uh, now, Jeremiah, is that your grandfather? That's my, my uh, yeah, my maternal grandfather. Okay, that's so cool. Thank you so much that, for this. That, that house was bought um, by my grand, my mother's aunt, who um, graduated from Hunter College in 1904, and she was more or less the money of the family. She was a teacher. She, she taught him uh, Park Slope, an area that was developed by Reynolds prior to developing Long Beach. Wow, that's so cool. Great pictures. This is great. Thank you so much for sharing, because you know what? All of these things are like keeping us afloat and, and, and keeping our history live. It's keeping us alive. Now, I came about this photograph in our collection, and I had no idea who this person is. His name was on the back of the picture, which was great, because it gave me a start off to do some research. When I looked him up in, the, um, in Ancestry, I found the registration card. Again, here's a registration card for the service. He was living on California Street. He was born in 1878. He was a carpenter. And I found out he was a builder. Now, when I looked a little further, I found out something very sad because you see in the New York Times, March 1st, 1926, his bungalow, he and his wife were in the bungalow in the West End and they died in the fire. Wow. Uh, Page 45 or 43. Yeah, right. So you see, it even says that he had his horse and his dog were in, in the fire with him and his wife uh -huh. and, they, and they died in the fire. So they had the horse in the West End. Yeah, they had, this is his horse. This is, um, this is the gentleman, um, Tompkins. And from one picture, look what I found out about him. It's like incredible. And he was a West End person. He was a builder and he died in his bungalow in the West End. It's very wow. sad, but look at the information you find from a card. Sure. Now the Wilder building, of course, I think there's like an Asian fusion kind of restaurant going on there. So I didn't cut that part in, but I wanted to show, show you in the facade of the building, it's still wow. in brick, says the Wilder building. Mm -hmm. And Anne Evelyn told me that her grandmother's, you know, drugstore was in the Wilder building. And then my brother said, oh, that should be like a really cool question because it's named after this gentleman that's on the screen. And he was in the House of Representatives in back when. He was also in the US Army. He was on the state census. He lived on Olive Street, 236 West Olive Street in Long Beach. So his beginnings, he was on the early census from back to 1925. And his parents, I see them on the 30 census and the 40 census. So his family has lived here since the 20s, of course, he's passed now, but he became Congress. He was our Congress. And he is Wilder. And the building in the West End is his family's. Mm. So that was a piece of interesting here I didn't know anything about. Thank you, Joe. 
it was very, it was great. 60s and 70s. He was a good person and always involved in Long Beach. Well, I'm sure he yeah. lived here his whole life. It, so. it was amazing. Yeah. And he rode a bike. And he rode a bike. <laughs> 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 now we're looking to current day, um, of course, West End. There's some new businesses. Everything has changed, of course. Um, I think that's um, St. Brendan's Day when they have Irish Day Parade down in West End. This is Beach Street, yeah. Lily's, West End Pizza. So, um, you know, Long Beach doesn't look like it did, but it's still there. The West End's still here. Yeah. Yeah. Lily's used to be a grocery store. Yeah. You know, this is a great country. shot. I have to be Lily. Yeah, there's, um, of course, I probably left out a million businesses, but um, we all know what they are. We hopefully don't forget our good times. Um, I like this because this is still a wooden jetties photo. It's a black and white. And um, most of this has changed because we're going to go around to the next one. These are the dunes in the west. And I have one more shot. And this is an aerial of Long Beach going west now. Oh. Ah. I'm guessing this is, a, this is a polar bear shot, an aerial. So probably somebody's drone took this. Um, I think this is a polar bear Sunday. I just don't know which year. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I can't thank you guys enough for joining us today. And Evelyn, thank you for your share. Um, for um, the photographs that you sent me, I can't thank you enough. Um, David, thank you for coming. Your sisters, your, your nieces, your family. Um, I'm glad we're one big happy family. Um, the Long Beach Public Library, we, we love our public and we love Long Beach and we love being with you guys.